deliberate cold exposure is one way to enrich the amount of brown fat. You get a, a stronger furnace. Um, and there's some wonderful science on this uh, published recently in Cell, uh, Cell Reports Medicine by the first author is um, Susanna Soberg um, from Denmark. And it's really amazing work. What, what they showed is that um, 11 minutes a week divided up into a couple sessions of two to three minutes of deliberate cold exposure increases the density of brown fat in adults and allows them to feel more comfortable in cold temperatures when they're just walking around, okay? Back in the day, hot water was a luxury. People had to live near hot springs in order to enjoy a hot bath. So for most of human history, we bathed in cold water. But even when the ancient Greeks developed heating systems for their baths, they continued bathing in cold water for the health benefits. You've most likely been taking warm showers for your entire life, and there's nothing wrong with that. However, today I'm going to tell you about the benefits of switching from warm to cold. If you're in pain, and I give you a lobotomy, this was done decades ago for pain control, I cut the connections between the prefrontal cortex and the periaqueductal gray, let's say. You still feel the pain, but it doesn't matter anymore. The emotional significance of the pain is gone, and so you you feel much better as a consequence. Now, I'm not recommending lobotomies for pain, although modified leucotomies are still sometimes used for intractable pain. Now, imagine that maybe you're, you're in pain, so you're, you have your hands in the cold, or you're in a cold shower, or you're in a lake, and instead of running away from the pain and distracting yourself, you start to focus and pay really close attention to all the sensations that you're feeling, even though they're aversive. Like you're, you're, you're paying extremely close attention. So I wonder if that would, is what's producing the connection between the prefrontal cortex and the periaqueductal gray. The prefrontal yes. cortex is opening the gates and exploring all the sensations yes. and learning to, that it can do that and learning that perhaps in principle also to master it cold you know therapy whether it's cold shower or the extreme cases ice baths yes there are physiological changes that happen yes your body learns to acclimate i mean it's like training a muscle your body's ability to acclimate to cold or hot is something that you can strengthen and improve and because we're always in air conditioned and heated rooms we don't ever train them but the real benefit is learning to be okay with being uncomfortable yeah that's the big big benefit I like to be able to handle the extreme changes in temperature it's you're teaching your body to adapt to that and become very good at that and if it's very good at that when we head into things like winter time your body adapts it does it handles that when i think when most people are susceptible to getting sick it ain't no big deal for you so i find that being one of the most beneficial things most common question i get about deliberate cold exposure is how cold should the water be the second most common question I get about deliberate cold exposure is whether or not cold showers are as good, better, or worse than cold water immersion up to the neck. How cold impacts the brain and body. Temperature is a very potent stimulus for the brain and body. That also means that it carries certain hazards if it's not done correctly. You have a baseline level of temperature that is varying, changing across the 24 hour cycle. So any use of deliberate cold exposure is going to be superimposed on that rhythm, that circadian rhythm, meaning that 24 hour rhythm. The basic contour of your circadian rhythm in temperature is that approximately two hours before the time you wake up is your so-called temperature minimum. So your temperature minimum is a time within the 24 hour cycle when your body temperature is at its lowest. So if you normally wake up around 6 a.m., your temperature minimum is probably about 4 a.m. If you normally wake up at about 7 a.m., your temperature minimum is probably about 5 a.m. It's not exactly two hours before your wake up time, it's approximately two hours before your wake up time. If you have trouble getting up for the day, cold shower is a good cure for your sleepy morning. A change in body temperature sends your body into a slight state of shock, which instantly boosts your alertness and the feeling of being awake. The freezing water is going to get your heart pounding, lungs pumping and eyes wide open. When you get hit by the cold water, it forces you to start breathing more deeply and you'll get more oxygen into your body. 
It's like entering a meditative state. Your heart rate will also increase, and it's going to feel like drinking a cup of coffee. You'll have extra energy to be more productive and tackle the rest of the day. Second benefit is that it can boost your willpower by doing something you are resistant to doing. You make your willpower stronger. So maybe when I'm in the shower and I do the 30 second cold exposure, I should do everything I can to concentrate. It's weird because I can feel myself fleeing from it in the shower. You know, it's like, God, when this is going to be over, I don't, I, I don't want to feel the sensation of the ice water on the front of my body. I don't want to move it onto my back. It's like, but I, I guess what I should be doing is turning around and facing the dragon in as much detail as possible. I, I didn't know that was possible with pain. I know it's possible with anxiety. That's clear. That the literature's clear on that. So But pain, it, yes, it, uh, uh, pain, hmm. uh, very primordial, and anxiety. These breathing exercises they help very good against anxiety. But also, when they put themselves into this deliberate, that then they achieve much bigger increases in core uh, resting metabolism, um, improvements in blood lipid, uh, blood lipid, and and insulin management profiles. And there's some other positive effects like improved mental resilience. So a lot of positive effects. I started off my career studying thermal regulation. That's what I did as an undergrad, and so I have a deep love of that literature. Um, we have a storage of of healthy fat in our body called brown fat, which is literally brown under the microscope because it's rich with mitochondria. Think of it as the the oil in a candle. It allows you to feel warm in cold temperatures, and it acts as a furnace for your metabolism. It's generally um, enriched around the clavicles, upper back, and around the heart, a little bit around the liver. It's not the blubbery fat that um, people generally want to have less of. It's a it's an endogen. It, it's a deep a deep tissue fat. Uh, it's really healthy. Uh, children have a lot of it. You tend to lose it over time unless you do cold exposure. As you go from your temperature minimum to the time in which you are going to awake, your temperature is rising slightly. And then at the point where you wake up, your temperature starts to go up more sharply and will continue to go up into the early and sometimes even into the late afternoon. And then sometime in the late afternoon and evening, your temperature will start to decline and indeed as you approach sleep your body temperature will drop by anywhere from one to three degrees and in fact that decrease in core body temperature is important if not essential for getting into and staying in deep sleep that background or what we call baseline circadian rhythm in core body temperature is important to remember because it helps us frame both the effects of deliberate cold exposure and it helps us frame when you might want to use deliberate cold exposure in order to access specific states. It also points to times within the 24-hour cycle when you might want to avoid using deliberate cold exposure if your primary goal is to get to sleep. To make a muscle bigger and stronger, you have to push yourself to move more weight than the last time. Willpower works the same way. By exposing yourself to something that takes some serious self-discipline, you start building that willpower muscle. And one of the best ways to build it is to do something as hard as taking a cold shower.